worship together. Here at Champion, we don't take that for granted that we get to serve, that we get to praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I have um, a scripture to share this morning. It comes from John 7, verse 37. And Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare, rivers of living water will flow from his heart. And when he said living water, he was speaking of the spirit. And so whatever it is that you need or coming this morning, God is here. The king is ready to meet with you. And he is ready to give us his spirit. And so if we could just lift our hands in the attitude of worship, just to prepare our hearts in our minds, Lord, we want to worship you in spirit and in truth. We want you, Holy Spirit, to have your way in our hearts. Only you know exactly what it is that we need. We didn't come here to, to look cute or to impress our neighbor, but we want to sit at your feet. We want to honor you as the one who is worthy of it all. We came here to seek you and to be with you, King Jesus. And Holy Spirit, we just ask that you would have your way in this place. Let us not have the restraints of, of our own minds or within our own hearts, but we want to just let you have your way, God. Have your way, Holy Spirit. We love you, Lord. If you could just confess with your mouth that you love him, that he is good, that he is wonderful. We are here for you. We love you, God. We love you, Lord. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give our hands a clap for Jesus already. We're going to celebrate.
want you to take this moment and just suppress it. You know, the Bible says that Jesus came to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. Like you and me. There is no grave that can hold his body down. The Bible says he was sinless. He was perfect. The grave had no other choice but to let him go. To let him go. He didn't deserve to be there. Y'all want to worship with us this morning? Amen. Come on.
this place this morning. I don't know if you feel it, but his presence is here today. So we thank you, Jesus, for your presence. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. I love this song um, because it speaks against fear. It speaks against worry. It speaks against anxiety. And I'm sure one of those three things we've all felt within this past week. But I love this song because we were singing against those things. And we're declaring that God is on the throne. So let's just continue in this attitude of worship as, as we worship our King and we just speak out against those things, worry, fear, anxiety, depression. Let's just speak out against those things and declare that God is on the throne today and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God is on the Just think about it, just think about it. God is always good. He loves like a father should. Just think about it. 
We good now? Listen. I could quote scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture about God's intent for humanity. But one of the things that he says in there is it's his pleasure that his children be whole. That's what he says. What does that mean? That means that he wants it to happen. He wants it to be so. And I don't know what you need from the Lord today, but I know this. He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask or think. And if you need prayer this morning, I want to ask you to join us down here and let us pray with you and believe God with you to meet your need. Come on. You know if you have a need. visitors here, we've got a card in the seat back in front of you. It's called a welcome home card. If you'll fill that out and turn it to Welcome Center, we have a bag of goodies for you. Make sure if you're a first-time visitor,
that you fill that out and turn it in. Please. Church members, good to see you in the house of the Lord again. Amen. Amen. You know, our, our faithful members that come to this church weekly are the ones that keep the doors open in this place. If it wasn't for y'all, we wouldn't be here. Amen. Amen. If it wasn't for God, none of us would be here. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to welcome everybody. I hope someone has made you feel welcome today. I hope someone has been pleasant and peaceful to you today. Where are you coming to this house of the Lord feeling like you're in your family's living room? Amen. Amen. We're going to talk about tithes and offerings. Today I want to talk about what tithes are. Why, why, we, why we pay tithes. Who said we should pay tithes? Because it's still a requirement of us. Let's go to Haggai, or Haggai, however you say it. Chapter 3, verse 6. For thus said the Lord of hosts, once more in a little while, I will shake the heavens and earth, the sea and dry land, and I will shake all nations, and they will come with they will come with the wealth of all nations, and I will fill the house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts, because the silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Now what's that saying? Everything is his. And we owe him a tenth of that. That's our tithe. We owe that to him because he's made a way for us. So all, all the silver and gold belongs to God. Amen? The glory of the latter house will be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, saying the Lord of hosts. What's he saying is, if you do your part, this sanctuary will be better than it was before. He was talking about the temple. And if you do this, if you do these tithes, the temple's going to be greater than before. He's going to call all nations together. Amen? Amen? Amen. First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 6. God gives increase. Do y'all understand that? We do what we do, but God gives us the increase. Amen? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, 5 and 6. Who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom you believe, even as the Lord gave to each one, I have planted. Apollo has watered, but God gives the increase. Amen? Do y'all understand that? No matter what you're doing, you're planting seeds. You're watering. You're doing everything you're supposed to be doing. God's the one that gives the increase. It's not what you're doing. It's God that gives the increase. But you're being obedient in doing what you do. Amen? What is time? Let's go to Leviticus. 27, 30, and 32. What is tithe? Any tithe of the land, whether seed of the land or fruit of the tree, belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. Any, any tithe of the herd or flock that pass under the counting staff, the tenth one shall be holy to the Lord. All right, that's tithes. That's paying your tithe, the tenth. You understand what I'm saying? Whatever you make, a tenth is what you're supposed to give to God. If you can't live on 90% of what you make, you can't live on 100% of what you make. Amen? Because you're not going to get an increase if you don't tithe. That's right. The first fruit. The first fruit. He gave it to y'all. First 10 is his part. Matthew 2, Matthew 22, 21. 
Therefore, render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. Amen. Do y'all understand what that's saying? It's saying you got to pay your taxes. Do all the stuff you're supposed to do. But give God what you're supposed to give God. And that's that tenth. Amen. Father God, we just come to you. Thank you for your son. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Bless each one of these givers today, Father. Bless these tithes and offerings. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. tries to roll over my bones Sorrow comes to steal the joy I own Brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love My fear Stand a chance when I stand in your love My fear does stand a chance when I stand in your love Oh, chain no longer has a place to hide and I am not captured I'm not afraid to leave my past behind Why oh, won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love the kids on stage and do the blessing of the backpacks. As y'all know, it's a crazy world, 
and there ain't nothing wrong with a little help from God to bless over our kids in their school year. So I want to start off and say how much of a, a blessing it has been to minister your kids. Uh, we love your kids uh, like we love our own kids, and it's been a true blessing. It's been awesome. I think I speak for every volunteer in the children's ministry. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, everyone please bow your heads. Lord, we come to you today, Lord, and we ask for your blessing over these, these kids, Lord, in their school year, Lord. We ask that you keep them safe, protect over them, Lord. Go in front of them and go behind them, Lord. Please guide the teachers, Lord. Guide the everyone in the administration, Lord. Just bless over everyone in, in our school districts, Lord. Just let them have a safe year, Lord. Protect over them. Place a hedge of protection around them, Lord. We give you all the praise and glory, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, it's good to see you in God's house this morning. It is. I, uh, you know, our greatest possession as people is our children. How many of you would say that? I love my babies. You know, you, you grandmothers can really say, hey. <laughs> Yes. And it's so important, not just today, that we pray for our children and their campuses and their teachers. And I'm just going to tell you this, and, and it's not to rain on any kind of parade, but the enemy is after our children. 
And it's up to us to stand in that gap and pray for them and pray over them. Amen? How often should you do that? All the time. All the time. May God trust us with that great and precious and wonderful gift. Amen? Amen. Well, I want to say this. If you're visiting with us today, thank you so much for being our guest. I trust that people have been kind to you. You know, we don't... Listen, nobody wants to go to church with a bunch of jerks. That's the truth. I don't even want to go to the grocery store with them, but you have to sometimes. Amen. So we're glad that you're here today. We are. And we hope that you'll come back and see us again. I mean that. But would you give this worship team a hand this morning? Today, I want to talk to you about the church. I believe this. I believe the Word of God simply says what it means and means what it says. And if you look at what's going on around the world globally, not just here, but around the world globally, and then if you read the back of the book, the book of Revelations, and you see things that are going on, that the Bible says that are going to go on and they're, they're happening now. And, you know, I've heard since I first started going to church as a teenager that Jesus was coming back and my pastor, he had preached hell so hot my feet had sweat. I'm just telling you. <laughs> but the truth is, we're this many years closer now than we were then. And you say, well, preacher, you're old. I'm not that old. And I will tell you, them old timers, them, them guys that had the hair the same color mine is now, which is the wisdom hair look, <laughs> they would tell me, boy, it goes by like that. And they're right. You youngsters, I want you to listen to me. Jesus is coming back. Yes, he is. And he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. That's what it says in the Bible. Does that mean you have to be perfect? No, that just means you have to be looking for him. Right. Amen. But I want to talk to you today about the church, the church as a whole. If a football team is unified, it does not mean everyone's playing the same position. It does mean everybody's going to the same goal line. If an orchestra is harmonious, it's not because they're all playing the same instrument. It's because they're all playing the same song. If a choir is singing in great harmony, it's not because they're singing the same parts. It's because they're adding their part to the same song. It is the goal that produces unity. Unity is not sameness. Unity has to do with same purpose. And I hope that we as a body of believers have the same purpose in why we serve the Lord. And today, it's important for you to understand that together, we can and we will achieve great things for the Lord. Friends, if we stay in unity, we will be a life-giving church. You know, I've been to different kinds of churches. I've, I've had, I wouldn't consider it a privilege, but I've, I've had opportunity to preach in Many different churches, many different kinds of churches. And I can tell you this, that not every church is the same. I mean, I've been to churches where you, you think Lucifer's wife run the show. I'm just telling you, it's not everybody's kind. As you know, you've lived long enough to know this. And you go to those churches and... and and I'm not knocking any one church. I won't tell you, so don't ask me what church I was at when that lady cussed me out in the parking lot and then she led to, she led to singing. And she didn't know I was the preacher that day. You should have seen us when we looked at each other like, hey. <laughs> I'm glad I was far enough along in my relationship with the Lord that it didn't affect me, but I, I believe it bothered her a little bit. But I just want us to be a church. 
that is trying to go after the lost. You know, my prayer all of the time is simply this. I pray this all the time. You can ask Katie. I pray, Lord, send us the hungry, the hurting, and the lost. And Lord, send us those that nobody else wants. And the reason I pray like that is because I was one of those that nobody else wanted. Hello? And I believe that if we'll pray like that, that the Lord will send us those people. And guess what he will do? He'll send us those that everybody else would like to have. Hello? We are a life-giving church. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse number 18 says, Where there is no vision or no revelation, the people perish or the people cast off restraint. But blessed is he that keeps the law. You see, people perish without vision. Organizations become ineffective without vision. Churches die without vision. Vision is vital to our survival. We've got to have it. If we don't have a a, a common goal or a, a same direction to go, guess what we'll be doing? We'll be like ants. You can't figure out where they're going. Just run around, 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 around. We've got to have that same goal, that same vision, that same purpose. And I've had people over the years say, Pastor, share with me your vision. Okay. And they're like eagerly awaiting. I said, it's people. Reaching people. The reason I say it like that is because, you know, God didn't tell us to go and and, uh, build buildings. He said, go and seek the lost. Go after the lost. Go after those that nobody, that doesn't know him. That's who he tells us to go after. You know, monuments, listen, monuments are great. Buildings are beautiful. I'd rather be in this building than that tent today, I can tell you that. If we were still in the tent today, I would be preaching on hell and the return of Christ. (laughs) We've got to have vision. We've got to have the same direction. We've got to have the same goals. The Message Bible says it like this. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. As a church, we don't want you to stumble. So we must have a God-inspired vision, and we must communicate A God-inspired vision. And today I want to share with you a verse of scripture that I feel like that the Lord gave me to to share with you about vision. It's found in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 9 and verse number 31. It says this. It says, then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, Samaria. It could be then the church from Hempstead, Waller, Magnolia, Cyprus enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened. Living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. Today, I want to share with you six qualities of a life-giving church. But would you pray with me first, please? Father, thank you for the opportunity to share your word once again. And Lord, I ask you, God, that you would help me to speak clearly. Lord, and speak through me. I pray this. And Lord, I ask you, God, that you would help us not to just be hearers of your word today, but God, let us become doers of your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Six qualities of a life-giving church because we want to be that church. We don't want to be a life-sucking church. You ever been around people who suck the life out of you? I'll raise my hand, I have. Yes. Yes. How often do you want to get back around them again? Man, people that I get around that they just suck the life out of me. You know, every time they call, I just always seem to be busy. (laughs) Whether I am or not. Oh, help me, Jesus. Y'all had had to pray for me because I have to work on that. Huh. In this verse I just read to you in Acts chapter 9, there's there's five qualities that we must have to be a life-giving church. Peace is one, strength is one, fear fear of the Lord is one, encouragement is one, and increase is one. 
But I'm going to share with you six qualities of a life-giving church. Here's number one. Take good notes. Here's number one. We are a church of peace. You ever heard this? I want world peace. They've sold millions upon millions upon millions of t-shirts and caps and keychains and no telling what else that says world peace or peace. (laughs) People search all types of areas to find peace. What am I talking about? They, they go to the bottle. They turn to the bottle. They turn to pills. They turn to drugs. They turn to different things. The church should be that place of peace. That when your soul is troubled and you don't know what to do and you don't know where to go, you should, you should know that the church is a place of peace. Romans chapter 14 verses 17 through 19 says this, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. And we're pretty good at that. You ever see church folks, we always go out to eat? And we just eat and eat and eat and eat, eat, eat. I had somebody tell me, Pastor, you look like you're gaining weight. I said, have you walked around me lately? <laughs> Life is not about eating and drinking but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. The kingdom is is about peace and joy and righteousness. Verse 18 says, because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and and receives human approval. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and mutual edification. You see, there's individual peace. When you're a follower of Christ, you should have peace. And we should also have peace with others. There's corporate peace. How do I know this? Because Ephesians 4 and 3 says this. It says, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Say this with me. Say unity. 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 How do you keep unity? I just read it to you, class. Through the bond of peace. We're unified Number one, around Jesus Christ and his holy word. We believe here at this church that Jesus Christ is the son of God and the Bible is the inspired, infallible word of God. Second Timothy chapter three and verse number 16 says this, all scripture, how much scripture? All scripture is God breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking. We don't like that part. Correcting and training in righteousness. All of the Bible is God inspired. I'm not making that up. It's in your Bible. And here's why, what, I, what I wanted to say with this. Our methods may change. You know, we, we try lots of things, and if they don't work, that we don't keep, keeping a, a, keep kicking a dead horse. Our methods will change, but our message will never Amen. change. Why? Because the Word of God tells us don't add to it and don't take away from it. The message, Jesus is the Son of God. And the message of this church is he's the Son of God. He was born through a virgin named Mary. He lived a perfect and sinless life. He died on a cross for all of humanity's sins. He rose from the grave with all power in his hand. And he is now seated at the right hand of the Father. We believe that we're saved by faith through his marvelous and generous grace. We believe that if you haven't received Jesus as your Savior, that you will spend eternity separated from God. Thank you for all those amens. We believe the only way to heaven is through a personal relationship with Jesus. And here at Champion, we're going to major on the major. And these things I just mentioned to you are the majors. It amazes me how the church at large looks for reasons of division, reasons like eschatology. That's a big word. You know what eschatology means? End time events. I think sometimes we use them big words and we shouldn't because we can't spell them. 
You shouldn't be able to use no word that you can't spell. Boy, my vocabulary would get limited. <laughs> Churches have been divided for years over pre-trib, mid-trib, or post-trib. When is Jesus coming back? Well, he's coming back. That's what I know. And if I do my part and I do the right thing, I don't have to worry about if he's coming back pre-trib, mid-trib, or post-trib. He's coming back for a church that's without spot or wrinkle. And if I live right according to his word, I don't have to worry about that stuff. Why is it that we try to get so close to the world that we can just barely hang on with Jesus? Listen, stay away from the hog pen. You know, we've got to have something happen on the inside of us that will make us where we don't want to be part of the world anymore. You know something? You can take a pig and you can take him and get a pedicure and get his hair did. And you can put a shiny suit on him. But as soon as that pig gets close to slop, guess where it's going? Right back to it. Why? Why do I say it like that? Because that pig ain't, it ain't had nothing changed, nothing transformed on the inside of it. You see, when we have Jesus living on the inside, amen, he'll take care of what's on the outside. You see, the Holy Ghost can't live inside of you and, and then there'll be other things in there. There's not room enough for the, the world and, and the Holy Spirit in here. There's room for one or the other. Churches become disunified over speaking in tongues. Some say it's right. Some say it's wrong. Some say that, that people that do it are prideful and others are scared of it. Churches become disjointed over are you baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, or are you baptized in Jesus' name? Well, I've got good news for you. If you want to be baptized in Jesus' name, we'll dunk you like that. If you want to be baptized in, in the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost's name, we'll dunk you like that. We are here to take care of you. We're going to keep the main thing the main thing. We'll do both. Listen, if you're uncertain how you want to be baptized, we, we can just do it all. I baptize you in the name of Jesus and the Father, the Son, and the, and the Holy Spirit. Twice. <laughs> what I'm saying is this. We believe that if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, that we're on the same team. Yes, <laughs> we're going to major on the majors and friends we must work together to point people to the Lord Jesus Christ and I believe this that we can be diversified and unified because of the Holy Spirit a church of peace will be diversified and unified Galatians chapter 3 there is neither 3 and 28 says there is neither Jew or, nor Gentile nor slave nor free nor they're male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And this church is a church where everybody is welcome. Yeah. Amen. We used to sing a song years ago, not in here, but I learned it when I had to work in the children's church. I didn't have a choice. When my pastor said, you know what, Gene, today you are the janitor. That was just a fancy word for you're going to keep them bathrooms clean. And I had to work in the children's church. I didn't have a choice. I didn't want to, but I didn't have a choice. And we learned a song that says, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the... We sing that in there and them kids, they'd be so happy and just loving. And then we get older and then we become stupid. I don't know what happens. We're supposed to become more educated. I don't know what happens to us. Help us, Lord. Help us. Hmm. <laughs> Your economic status doesn't matter here. You're welcome. Your political views doesn't matter here. You're welcome. Your denominational affiliation 
doesn't matter here. You are welcome. If Jesus is your Lord and Savior, we are all on the same team. And here it is going to always be about Jesus. We will make every effort for unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. You say, Pastor, is there things going on that I don't know about? No, no, this is what you call uh, summer cleaning instead of spring cleaning. <laughs> I just want to put it out there. I want to remind us all of our purpose. Here's the second one. Number two, it's okay not to be okay here. I remember when I first started going to church, I thought I had to have everything together before I ever went. Listen, you don't take a clean car to the car wash. What's wrong with us? You can come to this church just the way that you are. We believe we're called to be a hospital, not a retreat center or a retirement home. We believe that you can come to this church addicted, bound, lost, confused. We believe that you can come to this church with your hurts, your habits, and your heartaches. Lots of churches say this, but they don't really mean it. Somebody new comes here and people want to come up to the preacher and say, Pastor, I need to have a meeting with you. These people you're letting in here, mm -mm 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 -mm." Listen, if they're doing something that bothers you, you need to check yourself. We had a guy years ago, he had just got saved, and he was a little guy, a little, little man. He got saved, and, and he just grabbed me under one arm. He was blowing snot bubbles all over me and him, and he picked me up with one arm just spinning in circles, and there was nothing I could do to get away from him. <laughs> Great big guy. And he wanted to be an usher. And he wore shorts to church, y'all. Sometimes he wore cutoffs, and I just, you know, they're... Lord, have mercy, Jesus. But he wanted to be an usher. And he had tattoos. And I had a man come to me after church. This is why I'm passionate about this stuff. I had a man come to me after church and he's, Pastor. I said, What? Well, I just don't think that it's appropriate that someone with tattoos be receiving the Lord's money. I said, really? (laughs) I said, well, that's funny. That's funny to me. You know why it's funny to me? Because I don't think the Lord cares about them tattoos. I think he cares about that man's heart. Listen, we we, we all focus on the wrong things, man. Listen, there is B.C., right, before Christ. And then there's salvation. Hello? And that's when we can sing that song, I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things have passed away. Why? Because I've been born again more than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Anyway, to finish up, I said, won't you go tell him yourself? Well, I ain't telling him. (laughs) Listen, it's amazing the things that we're affected and offended by that never even crossed the Lord Jesus' mind. Mm. If Jesus is your Lord and Savior, we're on the same team and here it's okay not to be okay I believe that Luke chapter 5 verses 30 through 32 says this but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belong to their sect complain about his to his disciples why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners Mm. and Jesus answered them it's not the healthy who need a doctor but the sick I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Church, Jesus welcomed sinners, and religion has gotten the church all fouled up. Why? Because Jesus came for sinners, and I'm afraid that religion has influenced our methods. I do. Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. 
And here we still believe that you can belong before you ever believe. You can come here and you can kick tires and just check it out. You, you'll hear things that you may not be certain about. But here, here's, here's what I want you to know. If you come long enough, Jesus will grab a hold of you and he will change you. It's okay not to be okay, but it's not okay to stay that way. We believe that the power of God changes lives still. Believe that. Write this down. You need, you need to get this in your heart. Found people. Find people. You see, after you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, your journey has only begun and your job just began to. Found people will find people. Jesus was found and he hung out with people who weren't. And if you're really found, you will go find. We're called to be salt and light to this world. We're called to be a people of peace. And he didn't suggest that we go reach the world. He told us to. He commanded us to. Here's number three. We are a church of strength. Acts chapter 16 verse number five says, So the churches were strengthened in the faith and grew daily in numbers. And I say, let it be, Lord. Acts chapter 18 verse number 23 says this. After spending some time in Antioch, Paul set out from there and traveled from a place from place to place throughout the region of Galatia and Pyrgo and strengthening all the disciples. Acts chapter 14, verse number 22 says this, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. At this church, we want to strengthen your faith. We're passionate about strengthening your children. We're passionate about strengthening your grandchildren. We're passionate about strengthening your students. We spend lots of money on, on kids and, and, and teens here. And there's a reason for that. Because I remember when I was a teen going to church, I remember the seeds of faith that were planted in my life by teachers who served the church that we attended. One of the people who really influenced my life was a man named Clifford Rice. Don't expect you to know who Clifford Rice is. Clifford Rice was my Royal Rangers teacher. And he taught me how to tie knots. And while I was tying knots, he would tell me about Jesus. Another man that really spoke into my life as a teenager was my youth pastor. His name was Ed Greenstein. And he would just teach us the word Amen. week after week after week after week after week. And you know what? Because he made it fun, I would pay attention. Huh. They gave me a foundation in my faith walk. And this is the reason we will not back up on how we spend money here on our student and children's ministries. Listen, if we believe that they're truly the future, then we need to really invest more in our future. Why? Because... It really does change the lives of children. I want to invest in the foundation of our children here. And the best way to be strengthened is to invest in others. Help me to reach people. Will you take the next step in your faith walk? Thank you for all the amens there. Let me, let me move on. Some of you, maybe, maybe your next step is to receive salvation. Some of you, maybe it's to go to the Bible study that we have on Thursday nights. To learn more of the word. Some of you, maybe it's to read your Bible and pray daily. Some of you, maybe, maybe if, you're, if you're at home, you can come to the, the, the women's Bible study that we have up here to learn. Take that next step. Some of you, it's, you maybe your next step is to attend, attend church faithfully. Yes. Amen. Amen, preacher. Some of you taking the next step may be to, to tithe and give offerings. Maybe, maybe this is you. Some of you, your next step is you need to get rid of a habit. Amen. Amen. Some of you, maybe it's that to take the next step, you need to fast. 
The Bible does still say that. You're like, I rebuke you, devil. (laughs) Maybe some of you, your next step is to give up TV when you get home for a while. Preacher, I ain't never coming back if you keep talking like that. You're losing your mind, preacher. Next thing he's going to want, honey, is me to give up my recliner. You know, you know I ain't doing that. Huh. Maybe for some of you to take the next step in your faith walk is to give up your phone when you get home every evening. Oh, Jesus, 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 touch this man. Touch this pastor. He's lost his mind. Maybe for some of you to take the next step in your faith walk, it's to get baptized. And guess what? We're doing that on August the 20th. Sign up and take the plunge. We are a church of strength. Here's number four. I'm going to move on. I think I lost some of you right there in that list. We are a church that fears God. When we fear God, it changes how we live. When we fear God, it changes how we talk. Romans 14 and 17 says this, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Fear changes how we live. Psalms 111 and 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Psalms 19 and 9 says this, The fear of the Lord leads to life. Abundant life happens by fearing God. And we are a church that fears God. Here's number five. We are a church encouraged by the Holy Spirit. We believe that the church should be filled with joy and excitement. Listen, if you want to go somewhere that's dead, go every Sunday to the morgue. (laughs) Jesus said, I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. Listen, we ought to shout. If we go to the watch the Astros, and then they hit the ball, and we're like, oh, We need to get excited about what Jesus has done in our life. Hello? I've seen some of you mamas at the Little League and the T-balls and the footballs and all the soccers, and I see how y'all act. Oh, Jesus. Some of y'all get so loud they can't pay attention to the game in the ball field next to you. But you come here and you're like, bless the Lord. It's okay to be a little excited in the church. Yeah. People who have joy will be encouragers. We believe that church should be filled with joy and excitement. Romans 14 and 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 15, verse number 32 says, Judas and Silas, who themselves were prophets, said much to encourage and strengthen the believers. Friends, this is a church where you can receive joy and be encouraged and be strengthened. When everybody else thinks the worst of you, know that we believe the best for you. We believe in you. We love you. We pray for you. And I still believe this. I still believe that your best days are ahead. I do. I believe that. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse number 2 says, We sent Timothy, who is our brother and co-worker in God's service in spreading the gospel of Christ. Why? To strengthen and encourage you in your faith. Friends, God wants us to encourage others. We should be known as a church of joy. Joy in the Holy Spirit. Hear me. Negativity and complaining is not your spiritual gift. So please keep all that stuff to yourself. Nobody wants to hear you. We should be known as a church filled with joy. And encouragement. Here's number six. I'm going to put the mules in the barn. We are a church that's all about more changed lives. We believe that when the Holy Spirit moves in our church, lives will be changed. 
Acts chapter 2 and verse number 41 says, Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Look what happens when the Holy Spirit moves. Last year, I don't know, I'm going to say somewhere around 200 people we baptized. Can I tell you that that's not common? That doesn't happen everywhere. I'm not patting ourselves on the back. Listen, we should be more concerned about who's not here than who's here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We've got lots of work to do. Amen. Let's become accustomed to thinking that this is normal. To be more concerned about those who are not here than those that are here. Yes, yes, sir. Let's always celebrate what's God is, what, what God is doing, but we've got to get busy about the Father's business. Acts chapter 2 verse number 47 says this, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. God wants us to grow. Acts chapter 16, verse number 5, it says this. So the churches were strengthened in, in the faith and grew daily in numbers. If we're not growing, we're not being strengthened. And if we're not being strengthened, then we're not going to grow. It's God's heart that we grow stronger together. Acts chapter 4, verse number 4 says this. But many who heard the message believed, so the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. Hmm. All of this isn't in, in, in here by accident. Acts chapter 9, verse number 31 says, Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened, living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. It increased in numbers. We are still passionate about reaching people and seeing them changed by the power of the Holy Spirit. We're not trying to keep people out of church. We're trying to get people in. We're not building walls. No, we're going to keep building bridges. We're not consumed with how many people attend our church. No, but we should be concerned about how many people do not attend a church at all. It's God's heart that all would come to repentance. And it's our church's heart too. This church isn't backing up. No, we're going to press forward. Hear me. We want to do whatever we can to reach more people. We want to do more in our community to see more changed lives. We started this church 16 years ago. Next month will be 16 years with about 40 people. And I just want to tell you this. We're just getting started. Buckle your seatbelt. I believe this. I believe God still wants to see more changed lives and our best days are ahead. Friends, together we can accomplish the vision if we will all work together for the same goal. If we will love people, if we will stay in unity and we will reach for the same common goal, there's no telling what God can and will do in this place. Unity is being united or joined as a whole. You know, I'm passionate about invitation. If you've been around here for any length of time, you know that. The reason I'm so passionate is because somebody invited my family to church. Somebody named Jim Powell. You say, how do you remember all these guys' names? Because they were profound in my life. He invited us. And because of one invitation, so far there's three generations in my family that have been changed. And I just want to encourage you, all of you, to get one of these. You see, there's always an angle with you. Well, I try not to waste your time. But these are invitation cards. And invite your friends to come to church with you. That's the back to, back to church bash we're having next month. And we're going to have like a three ring circus here, I'm sure. There's going to be all kind of things going on. We're going to have a snow cone machine. That's important. How many of y'all like snow cones? 
Yes, Lord Jesus. Y'all are saved. The rest of y'all, y'all need prayer. But here, this card, this simple card, has all the information they will need to meet you here. It has the address. It has what we're doing. It has everything that's going on. But you know, the Lord commanded us to go and make disciples, go and reach the lost, all of these things. And when I stand before him, I want to hear these words. Well done. Well done. I don't want to stand there and him say, boy, what were you thinking? What do you want him to say when you stand before him? I'll tell you a story. There was a, a man named Burt Clendenin. Anybody know who Burt Clendenin was? Burt Clendenin was a pastor in Beaumont. Excellent preacher. Amazing. And he had a dream one night that he went to hell. And he was standing in hell above everybody. And there was this guy, and he said, he said I didn't see the Lord, but I knew that the Lord was standing beside me. And they're watching this man walk above everybody in hell. And ever so often, he, this man would stop and reach down and grab somebody by the hair and pick them up and look at them and drop them and keep going. And this went on, he said, for what seemed like hours. And he said, finally, I mustered up the courage and I said, Lord, what is this man doing? And he said, the Lord told me, he said, he's looking for the preacher who lied to him. But what does that have to do with this? It has everything to do with it because we have the truth. We can share with people how to spend eternity with Jesus. And it's important, man. You know, how would you like to know? And, and this is just a terrible thought, but, but if you had the opportunity to share the gospel with somebody and you didn't, and they did not make heaven, what a tragic thought. We've got to get hungry about reaching the lost. We've got to. You know why? Because the world is trying to destroy the home, destroy the family, destroy the children, destroy the marriage. It's trying to destroy everything. And we have the truth that can give us that joy unspeakable and full of His glory. So why wouldn't we want to share the good news with people? Let's pray. Father, we love you today and we thank you so much, Lord, for your love for us. I thank you for that. And Lord, I thank you for vision. And Lord, I thank you for everybody that's here today. God, I just ask you, Lord, that you would help us. God, give us a desire and a hunger, Lord, to, to thirst more after you and after righteousness. Lord, I ask you, God, that you would give us a desire to see more changed lives. Father, I ask you today, God, that you would place that hunger within us to share your word with others. Help us in this. Help us in this, I pray. And friends, while your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, I want to ask you a couple of questions. My first question is this. How is your relationship with the Lord Jesus? Would you say, Pastor, I need to surrender my life to Jesus Christ. Pray for me. If that's you, I want to see your hand. I want to pray with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You can put them right back down. Thank you. Or maybe this is you and you say, Pastor, there was a time when I was serving the Lord, but I haven't been holding up to my end of the deal lately, and I need to, I need a do-over. 
pray for me. Is that you, friend? I want to see your hand. God bless you. Thank you. Thank all of you. Thank all of you. You can put them right back down. Thank you. Well, would all of you say this prayer with me, please? Say, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Lord, I realize that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. And Lord, today I'm asking you to come into my heart, come into my life. Lord, forgive me for all my sins. And Lord, help me to serve you with all of my future. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, you've seen the hands and you know the hearts that were lifted up before you today. Lord, I just thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your mercies. I thank you for joy. I thank you for peace. But most of all, I thank you for salvation. Thank you for this. Father, I ask that you bless your people, that you encourage your people today. And Lord, help us to walk in that joy unspeakable and full of your glory. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Listen, there were some of you that you made it right today with the Lord, and you know who you are. And I just want to ask you to fill out that. There's a card in the seat back in front of you that says, I have decided. Would you fill that card out and turn it in before you leave today? Turn it in at the Welcome Center. Turn it in at the information table. It doesn't matter. Just turn it in. Turn it in. And then the second thing I want to ask you is this. If you do not have a home church and you made it right with Jesus today, would you consider giving this church one year of your life? Just start with one year and sit under the Word and allow the Word of God to begin to change you for the rest of your life. He's able, friends. I said, He's able. He's able and He will do it. He will do it. Amen? Amen. Well, know this. Your best days are ahead. And if God be for us, who can stand against us? Y'all say, hi, Stephanie. Hi. What an amazing word. Amen. One word that stood out to me through that whole message was the word strengthen. I can't even count how many times he said strengthen. And I think the way that we become a stronger church and we continue to strengthen our faith is to get more involved. You know, come to more events than just Sunday. So I have a couple of quick announcements of things we have coming up. But in case you guys didn't know, on the back of the bulletin is a calendar that talks about everything that we have going on. So continue to strengthen your faith. Maybe you come out for a Bible study um, on Wednesday evenings. Of course, we have youth group. We'd love to have everyone between 7th and 12th grades come out for that. Lots of opportunities for us to continue to strengthen our faith as believers. Amen. All right. So coming up next Sunday, men's breakfast. Ladies, feel free. Set a reminder in your calendar to roll them out of bed early. Send them on up here to fellowship with the other men. There will be delicious food. And they can spend some time together before church. So 7.30 a.m., men's breakfast. And then, of course, our Back to Church Bash. Pastor was speaking of it. It's going to be great. Invite some people out. We're going to have a lot of fun things going on here at the church. That's on September the 10th. Uh, we do need volunteers. So feel free to sign up at the welcome. I mean, at the info center to help us out with that as well. So let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for meeting with your people today. Thank you for your presence here. And God, we need that presence to go with us when we walk out that door. God, we want to shine as a light for you this week and reach somebody that you are going to put in our path. God, give us the words to speak and the discernment to see them. God, help this word that was spoken today to fall on good ground. God, that it would take root and that we would see fruit in our own lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.